Hey, what is up guys? Today I have a massive real review video for you guys and I'm going to change up the format a little bit. If you're familiar with my channel or have seen my stuff on YouTube before, you know that it's pretty polished. I put a lot of work in making things look as great as possible and I spend a lot of time on production. Well, I'm going to strip that back a little bit, minimize the editing and uh, just kind of free talk to you guys about all this gear. One, because there's so much gear and I've been uh, you know, playing with it for so long, I figure the easiest way uh, to put this information together is all at once. And two, you know, consider this just a, uh, you know, buddy talking to you with their honest opinion about gear. I'm um, not going to really cover specs too much. Uh, you can always look up the specs on uh, Pistafun's website. Uh, but I am going to talk to you about my experience with every reel that you see here today. To kind of give ourselves a bar for this discussion, uh, I'm going to you know, put what I recommend, outright recommend, as a um, great entry level reel. This reel kind of sets the bar as far as like what you can get away with if you don't want to spend a lot of money. And that's the Daiwa Sweetfire. This is a size 20, only 20 bucks. Sometimes you can find them on sale for less. And uh, man, if you're getting into fishing, salt or fresh, the Daiwa Sweetfire is kind of hard to beat for the money. So I'm going to put that over here and that'll give us kind of a good guidance as far as where these reels fit. As, uh, as options against established you know, players in the market, such as Daiwa. So we got a $20 reel over here. We're gonna work our way right. And the uh, you know, $100 mark kind of stops right here. And with that, we have the Pen Battle 2. So if you're familiar with my channel, one of my most popular reel reviews is my BG versus Battle 2 vid. Both reels are pretty synonymous with, uh, you know, best bang for your buck saltwater fishing reel. So I'll put the Pen Battle 2 over here on the right side and let you know how these Pissafun reels slot in between a $20 established reel and a $100 established reel. First reel in the block is the Pissafun Venom line. So Jason sent me this Venom, the original Venom, uh, about six months ago or so, at the same time, he was letting me know that they were going to release the Venom 2, uh, otherwise known as the Viper. So there was a redesign slash rebranding of what I think Jason referred to as their best entry level, entry level saltwater reel. So, you know, I haven't had too much experience with the Venom. I think it's priced between $35, $35 maybe $40, uh, you know, the higher you go up. Uh, I think this uh, tops out at a 50 size. And, uh, you know, I'm going to let you know straight up, as a saltwater reel, in my experience, at least with uh, the first generation, this is the Venom 1, it doesn't really work as a saltwater reel. I used this once out on the coast. I was catching surf perch with it. And, you know, after one session, grit and grime got underneath uh, the drag cap, and uh, there was a little squeak that's kind of, uh, disappeared and I suspect that's salt water getting into the rotor maybe uh, you know into the bearings these bearings are unshielded and uh, it just I wouldn't take it out back out in the salt water um, you know just just know for 30 35 dollars in my opinion there are gonna be better um, bang for your buck reels um, if you look really quickly at the quality of the parts underneath the hood here let me see if I can pull this open really quick yeah, there you go. So there's some salt and uh, some some sand right there. Yeah, the quality of that washer, it's just, it's just not perfect. I mean, you know, there is some kind of crystallization of salt in there to show you that, yeah, this thing was using the salt. And you know what? Pissafun, like a lot of companies, they do kind of stretch the term salt water ready. Uh, for a lot of reels, they stick a rubber gasket under here. They have a nice little bushing system underneath the drag, um, you know, underneath the spool here. And then they kind of in their marketing say, yeah, you can use this in salt water. True, you can use any reel in the salt water technically. But the way I've seen it advertised, they almost say that it's salt water ready. In my opinion, it's not. As a freshwater reel, you know, for $30, $35, it's a pretty solid reel. The nice thing about this reel and the Honor, um, they are graphite. They're built pretty solid. I mean, the tolerances aren't perfect. Let's see if the camera wants to focus. Um, the tolerances aren't tight. The tolerances aren't perfect. Yeah, there's going to be gaps here. You're going to have some kind of ugly seams and there might be some over molding in the plastic. Um, but man, this thing is like rock solid. I mean, you can probably throw this down, you know, a, a rock 
bank or on the jetty and it's not going to fail. Um, something about these kind of simpler graphite reels tend to do pretty well as far as abuse. This reel's not too bad. I know that this is a super popular ice fishing reel. I don't know why, um, but as far as freshwater, it's not too bad. It is a little heavy for its size. I think this is the 20 size. I do have other reels, uh, personal reels that are way lighter than this that aren't that much more expensive. You know, the Daiwa, um, Legalis, and uh, Revros, those reels aren't that much more, and they're phenomenal reels. So, you know, Pistafun does have a lot of competition when it comes to the big brands. Um, one thing you should note, Pistafun reels in general have amazing line lay, excellent line lay, and I'll show that in examples uh, with the other reels. Every reel here awesome awesome line lay except for this reel it kind of has like a really bottom heavy line lay uh, it almost looks like a bell and um, i don't know if that directly affects casting i never really had a wind knot because of that reel because of this reel and its line lay but just know that the line lay garbage on this one but for the second generation of the venom um or aka the viper that's this one the viper 2000 totally corrected it let's see if we can get that to focus in Looks really good, really, really good. Again, no problem, uh, you know, no problem uh, casting this reel. And uh, you can kind of see the visual difference. They went a little lighter. I did complain that this one is a little bulky, um, rock solid. You can drop this and it's not gonna really break. This one, they went a little smaller form factor wise. Everything's a little, little tighter. The build quality is, in my opinion, a lot better actually and uh the price reflects it i think they raised the price on uh, this reel by like five or ten dollars uh, i'm not i don't have any notes i'm kind of talking off the top of my head so you're gonna have to fact check that um one thing you should note uh, aside from the visual differences here um they did throw on an eva knob this eva knob isn't as comfortable as the rubber knob on the original version i kind of wish they use this rubber knob in other reels in their lineup and you'll see why um i really like the knob actually on on this reel here this is the venom one uh 2000 and this is the viper two 2000 prefer the knob on that guy so not too bad not too bad all right moving on really quickly i'm going to gloss over the uh, honor reel this is the next kind of step up in the uh, pissafun lineup as far as what you would consider a decent reel um, in their lineup you know what for a freshwater reel um or if you're fishing from a boat and you're not going to get this sprayed in the salt water for i think 40 50 dollars it's not too bad again uh pissafun does a pretty good job with these graphite reels it feels really good you know don't use it in the surf um one thing i should recommend one the drag or i'm sorry the gear ratio on this is super super slow i think it's like five one to one or something like that yeah there you go five one to one and uh, it's really slow so for surf fishing you're gonna have a heck of a time bringing in um you know your presentations your your bait whatever if you're, if you're throwing you know repetitive stuff if you're throwing carolina rigs if you're throwing lures it's almost too slow for the surf i do like the eva knob on this one um speaking of that five to one gear ratio that super slow gear ratio for smaller reels where you want to be agile and maybe throw quick uh, presentations, this isn't the best reel for that. Um, but if you are looking to, you know, crank in some bigger presentations and you need torque more than speed, the Honor 50 is actually pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, I use this as my light crab snaring reel, if that makes sense. Oftentimes you're going to find yourself hiking to, uh, you know, some far far off spots to get to some um, prime crab snaring um, locations and uh, you want something light that you can throw on your shoulder and throw on your backpack this reel is significantly lighter than my uh, other crab snaring reel and because of its gear ratio i think this one is five one to one or it might even be like four seven to one super super low super super slow but because of that you know reeling in crabs is just like a dream and next on deck is the Pissifun Carbon X. Now, James sent me this reel with a, a lot of excitement. I think this is Pissifun's kind of first attempt at like a refined finesse reel. And uh, it, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Um, you know, it's definitely, a, I would say, a pretty decent uh, bass offering. You know, a lot of these reels, I think, are kind of freshwater first. And then, you know, again, 
They say they're saltwater uh, ready because they have a little seal at the top of the drag and a little bushing at the bottom. Uh, you know, for compared to the other graphite reels, this by far is the lightest, it's the fastest, and it has the smallest form factor. Uh, you'll notice that the rotor is a little tighter, the spool is a little smaller, and uh, it really feels pretty light. Definitely a lot lighter than um, the Honor and uh, not significantly lighter than um, the like Viper. But as far as build quality and just, you know, feel, it definitely feels really light. And most reels that are faster, uh, this is 6.2 to 1, um, you know, there's a little bit of lag in the spin up. But, uh, you know, due to the uh, inertia as you kind of get up to speed. But this reel actually feels pretty good. And uh, it feels solid in hand. Let's see if we can get that to focus. There you go. 6.2 to 1. I think the new Viper uh, 2 uh, is also pretty fast. 6.2 to 1 for the 20 size. Whereas the old one, I think, is like 5.2 to 1. So they stepped up the speed on that one. Um, the one caveat and the one kind of disagreement I have uh, with this reel, again, I haven't really caught too many fish with it. I think I put a couple surf, fish, surf perch on it because that's what, um, you know, I have to catch. Um, the, the biggest kind of discrepancy, if you will, against this reel is its pricing. Uh, I think this is slotted in the $70 to $75 range. And, you know, that really puts you up there with um, some of the mid-tier offerings of the big name manufacturers. I mean, you're putting this reel up against the, uh, you know, Daiwa Legalis, uh, the Fuego LT, if you can find one on sale. I did. I bought a, uh, a Fuego LT um, 2500 size as my go-to uh, surf perch uh, spinning reel. And uh, man, that reel is phenomenal. And uh, I don't want to outright say that this reel isn't worth that. It's worth, you know, anything you buy is worth what you're willing to pay for it. But compared to the big name manufacturers, I find it hard pressed that anyone's going to want to spend seventy to seventy five dollars. If this reel was priced in the fifty dollar range, it definitely would be a lot more valuable, considering that this is a kind of an untested brand compared to the big ones. You know, you have to take into consideration that people have a lot of options at this price range. And, uh, you know, for what this is, I mean, you know, it's definitely a pretty nice reel, you know, for salt, for freshwater, it's definitely, um, you know, more than uh, more than enough, I think, uh, for the average uh, largemouth angler. Um, but man, you know, $75. So moving on to what used to be the most expensive reel uh, in the Pissifun lineup. Uh, this was at one time the flagship Pissifun spinning reel, and that's the Pissifun Stone. Now, I have uh, have a, a video on this that's pretty lengthy, and uh, of all the reels here, I kind of determined that this reel is uh, kind of redundant and doesn't really have a place in Pissifun's lineup. You know, it's kind of old school. It does look like a, a Daiwa Steez, kind of a, a ripoff of an original Daiwa Steez. Um, in my opinion, this is kind of an archaic reel in that I think at the time, Pissafun was pumping out higher end reels by higher end, you know, reels that they wanted to price in the close to the three digit mark. I think this one at one time was priced at $99, maybe even $100. I think you can find it now for like 70 I think what they were trying to do was slap together an offering um, using manufacturers that make other uh, real uh, companies, reels, products. This isn't an OEM design. And I know that because I've reviewed other reels and seen a million other reels on eBay, on Amazon that share the same parts. Um, this little uh, handle cover here um, gives it away that little carbon insert you'll find in a lot of places i've seen this reel frame um, on other reel manufacturers uh, c knight makes a reel very similar to this um, this cap gives it away the casking kodiak actually shares this cap if you look inside they share the same drag stack a lot of shared parts uh, the bale's the same um, even the knob is the same as uh, some other reel manufacturers. And another reason why I don't particularly like this reel so much is it's kind of like, again, I think they, I think they overhyped it. The, the, they were so excited to get something together that they put way too much drag in this. I think this drag is like 35 pounds, which is crazy because it has a huge drag stack with limited line capacity. So think about that. You catch a big fish 
it requires, you know, if it's going to require a reel that has this much drag output, you're probably going to want some line capacity because if a fish is that strong enough to uh, really test, you know, a, a reel with a drag capacity of 35 pounds, you're going to get spooled before uh, the, the drag gets tested. And honestly, in hand, if there was a fish on the other end of the line that could really put 35 pounds of drag to the test, this reel would probably blow up in your hand. So uh, just, just FYI, of all the reels here, I think this is the one to skip right here. So that leads me to a very curious, uh, the very curious case of the Pissifun Spartan, this is Spartan 6000. And there's a reason why you might have not heard of this or can find this anymore. It's because they don't even sell it anymore. So check this out. The Spartan came out, I think, uh, towards the um, middle or end of the summer last year. Um, and uh, I was pretty excited for it. It was the first e-branded reel that had uh, brass gearing. And, uh, you know, it's been smooth. The initial um, first one that I got, I got a test one that, you know, was, was available to me before it even went to market. It had its hiccups. They sent me another one, the production-ready version, and that one had all the errors ironed out, everything was refined, and it worked really well. It has uh, brass gearing, all alloy, fairly balanced. Um, it's a, I mean, it's a pretty decent reel. Again, price pretty high for, for what I think Pissifun can get away with. I think they priced this one at $99, or they did. This is the 6,000 size, or the largest size in this reel. 6.2 to 1 gear ratio, pretty quick for a big reel. This reel is pretty heavy, but man, it's a tank. Uh, I brought this with me on vacation to Maui, and I hooked up into something really heavy. I think I had 30-pound braid on it, and I fought it for probably 10 minutes. But this reel's drag was tested really smooth. A um, couple months later, I put a 35 pound bat ray on this reel and that ray really screened. I think it was the, the hardest fighting thing I fought in a long time and this reel was more than capable of pulling it in. You know what? It's not the smoothest reel. You have a big brass uh, pinion gear mated to a uh, decent size uh, brass main. And uh, you know, anytime you have brass, meaning brass, because that metal is so heavy and hard and hard to manufacture, it's gonna it's gonna be tough getting like a really really smooth meshing, and this reel is not smooth. You probably can't hear it, but you can almost you can definitely feel the meshing in the frame. Everything kind of vibrates, but you know what? It's no different than an old school kind of pen reel, like those old ZO fours. If you've ever spun those, those reels aren't designed to feel perfect. They're not meant to be Cadillacs. They're meant to be kind of old workhorse trucks and. I really got a sense of beyond everything that you see here this reel was an example of what an e-brand reel could manufacturer could do if they wanted to put together kind of a bomb proof reel i really think this reel was the closest example of that unfortunately you can't buy it anymore because they took it off the market they decided that the real manufacturing process of the brass gearing was too difficult to get consistently so they admitted that their reel, this one here, this is supposed to be their flagship reel, wasn't up to, I guess, the standards that they put out for their other products. Or maybe they're getting a lot of complaints that it just didn't feel smooth. And uh, they pulled it off the market just as fast as it came onto the market. So they don't make these anymore. I feel like I have two of these kind of unicorn reels that aren't um, you know, available to, to anyone anymore. And I'm glad I have it because, okay, so it's not a pen battle too uh, for a lot of the reasons why I spoke about you're not going to have this part support. Resale value, I mean, people are going to pay closer to the original price of this versus this. But having this in hand, and if they price this thing for like 30 to 40% less than what the MSRP was, I really think they had a good chance of having a winner because of, of how strong it is and just uh, how kind of utilitarian this reel is. I mean, it really kind of overlooks like, you know, finesse and uh, just super tight, tight tolerances for just a reel. I, I really feel like will last a long, long time more so than any other reel here because it has, you know, the, the brass guts and just, I mean, it's hard to describe it, but just feel it in hand. It's really solid. Um, I really like this reel. And I have two of them. Well, I'm moving up into another reel that 
Pisifun makes that they don't really sell too much of anymore. This is a Pisifun Thunder, and uh, the reason why you might have never seen it is because they don't sell it on Amazon anymore. You can actually buy it through their website, pisifun.com. Again, I'm not being paid to say that, pisifun.com. Um, this is their 200 size bait casting reel made for fresh and salt water. In my experience, this is definitely salt water capable. And no, this is not the uh, this is not the stock handle. This is the stock handle here. Kind of kind of wimpy. Um, again, it's a bigger kind of what I what I'm gonna call like a musky reel, I guess, or what Pissafun would uh, you know their their attempt at a musky reel, kind of a larger capacity bait caster. Even if it was you know meant for a bigger game like musky. Their stock handle is just way too short. You just don't, aren't going to get the torque you need uh, for, for big 3-ounce uh, swim baits. You know, cranking that on an 8-foot musky rod all day. You're just not going to get it. So, uh, yeah. So, they sent me this reel because um, I really had a good feeling about it. The reviews I saw and the, the few video reviews I saw on it, uh, you know, they made it look like it would be a pretty cool jigging reel. And that's what this is set up for. So, this goes on my 6.5-foot Shimano Travella uh, Medium Heavy. And, man, what a combo. I actually had... Okay, so you're probably gonna roll your eyes if you're still if you're still watching this video. You're, you're uh, thanks one number one, but number two, you're probably gonna roll your eyes uh, the most at this point. I had a a Abu Garcia Revo Three Beast. Okay, that's a pretty solid uh, saltwater reel. I hated it. Um, the the this button, the release button, under load, it would stick, and I couldn't release it. So if you're bottom jigging with like an eight ounce uh, swim bait you know, eight ounce jig head, you need a, a reel that's going to be able to release every time you turn it, uh, especially under load. That reel couldn't do it, got rid of it. I put this one on and this reel has never given me the problems that Abu Revo Beast did. This reel is actually pretty crazy nice. It's, 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 it's a, it's a champ. I've pulled up close to PB link cut on it, tons and tons of rockfish, um, you know, and I've thrown tons and tons of weight at the bottom you're talking about 200 240 feet uh, depths you're gonna need a lot of weight, weight to, to keep things uh, pinned down and uh, surprise surprise this little reel from this little reel manufacturer has been perfect coupled with this aftermarket eBay carbon fiber handle this thing is ridiculously light number one has just enough line capacity this is 40 pound Daiwa uh, J, J braid and look at the uh, look at the line lay on that sweet a lot better than some of the casking bait casters i have um yeah i won't talk about those but <laughs> the pisifun line lay is is pretty pretty sweet this is pretty nice um just enough capacity to to handle uh 240 foot depths 300 foot depths um you know in a hard drift so you know that, that's really like 500 feet of line or whatever that is um and uh with this handle and a fast gear ratio this is 7.1 to 1 i think um, the combination of the fast speed, this handle, it's lightweight. The fact that the frame is pretty rigid, the fact that uh, under load, I can, you know, press the release button pretty easily. It's really kind of been a surprise winner as far as rock fishing. Casting is also pretty solid. Uh, you don't really have to cast uh, too far when you go rock fishing, but if you're trying to get away from everyone, this will outcast, I think, most kind of cheap bait casters. Um, you'll be hard pressed to find a 200 size bait caster um, that is, in my opinion, you know, for less than what seventy dollars. That's going to be as good as this one. Um, let me know in the comments if you know of one, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find one as good as this one, especially with this handle upgrade. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty and it's pretty smooth too. Check this out with the. Uh, Attention set to low and the casting break set to minimum. Thumb bar down. Yeah, I don't know how many bearings there are, but this thing is pretty smooth. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely recommended. Why don't you see this on Amazon anymore? Well, because per James, they don't sell too many of them. For whatever reason, it didn't take off. Uh, I guess it wasn't worth. Uh, putting on their space uh, on Amazon, but they still sell it through their website, pissofun.com. So just kind of a sleeper surprise reel. Um, 
you know, I just said I recommend it. I don't outright recommend it because I don't want to put my name on it. Uh, but I will say that it's worth looking at if you want a 200 size bait caster, um, you know, for less than $70. I think this is like 65 or $70 right now. Um, I recommend that you take a look at it. I'm not going to say you yeah, outright buy it, but definitely, definitely take a look. Um, it's It's been a surprise for me. It looks great on the uh, Travala rod um, because it matches all the color schemes of the Travala rod. Um, you know, if you're not catching fish, at least you look good, right? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a surprise, uh, surprise reel. Uh, of all the reels here, I think this reel, hands down, has been the biggest uh, positive surprise. Uh, definitely, definitely like this one. And uh, speaking of, uh, and last but not least, uh, the next bait caster, the final bait caster, the final reel in this video. And uh, one you probably have been waiting all video or maybe skip through to get to is the Pissifun Chaos. Now, why do, why do I say that? I really think that um, this reel, I really think that this reel is going to be over the lifetime of Pissifun or up to, you know, uh, uh, as of today, can be Pissifun's bestseller. Now, why do I say that? It's really hard to find a small round reel that's all metal for less than fifty dollars, try it. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of graphite options out there. Akuma, Daiwa. Um, I don't know about Shimano. I think the the cheapest one is the Dakota at like eighty dollars. But it's really hard to find a round bait casting reel these days um, for less than fifty dollars. This Chaos Forty, I think it's forty bucks. And uh, you know, is it worth forty bucks? My opinion, with my experience with it. I think it is okay so check this out it's not in this format it's not meant to to be like a high-end like super torquey crazy little avid reel and that's what i've been kind of trying to to make it be uh it comes with a wimpy little bait caster kind of style handle here and uh man for what i'm using this thing for this thing had to go so fortunately i had uh, another aftermarket uh big power handle reel and stuck it on and okay number one this thing casts phenomenal i really hate the fact that it has its uh braking mechanism right here it's a big knob you can't really palm it without you know kind of rubbing your hand into that knob boohoo only 40 bucks and i'm not saying this is like a perfect reel again it's 40 dollars. it's a budget reel all this stuff is kind of considered budget gear right you have your shimanos you have your abus you have your van stalls or whatever this world kind of exists below that but kind of you know mass market you know a manufacturer like this is going to put out as decent quality stuff as they can for as cheap as they can because that's the market they're serving this reel isn't perfect <laughs> the first time i use it the blue cap of one of these knobs fell off okay this thumb bar under load it won't pop up without a little encouragement unlike this one that works perfectly this one tends to get sticky under load so if you're bottom jigging and uh, you have a lot of weight and that weight is pulling on the spool good luck trying to turn the handle and lifting the thumb bar every time you're gonna have to push it up manually sometimes um the frame is actually built pretty well. The line, uh, line lay again, pretty excellent, pretty good. Bearings are a little rough, rougher than the Thunder. I don't think there's as many bearings again because this reel is pretty cheap. It's only forty bucks, but man, for what it is, it's pretty decent. If you're looking at getting into a round reel for whatever reason, you want something, you know. A uh, small form factor, and if you want something with a, if you if you're looking for a bait caster with a line clicker, something cheap, this reel has it. You know, it's very difficult to find a bait caster this small uh, with a with a bait clicker for under forty for under fifty dollars. This is the forty. It comes in a fifty and a sixty. And uh, one thing you should know, in its out-of-box configuration with this wimpy little handle, this reel has, like, no power, even though it has a pretty low gear ratio, 5, 3 to 1. Um, for whatever reason, it just doesn't have 
a ton of power, and I suspect it's because the main gear to pinion. I'm guessing those gears are pretty small in the diagrams. I think in their marketing materials, they advertise that main as a um, aluminum gear and the pinion as brass. I think probably they're undersized a little bit and maybe because I was cranking up some rockfish and weights with this little handle, it just didn't feel powerful um, with this setup. I'm definitely going to get a lot more leverage. Um, we'll see how that goes. So that this this reel is still kind of TBD, but I've caught some, you know, I've caught some fish with it. And again, the thing that surprises me the most is its casting ability. You can get a lot of distance out of this tiny little reel. Super, super surprising. Uh, you know, I can probably cover the same amount of distance as like a 6,000 spinning reel. No joke. So we come to the part of the review where I size up these reels again in uh, accordance to what I consider... One of the best bang for your buck low end reels. Again, this is the $20, $20 uh, Daiwa Sweetfire. We'll put it here. And the Pen Battle 2, the $100 Pen Battle 2 4000. I'll put it right here. And uh, you can find these for a lot cheaper, but MSRP, we'll call it $100. And I'm going to let you know do any of these reels here, do they truly deserve to sit in between the $20 Daiwa and the $100 Pen? Well, let's go one by one. Again, this this part is strictly opinion based on experience, based on my experience with a lot of manufacturers' reels. I put about minimum 10 hours on each reel that you see here and got a good sense of what is worth, you know, kind of sitting in the range between your $20 Daiwa and your $100 pen. So first up, foremost, Viper and uh, Venom. Do they belong up here? I think these are priced at like $30, $30 to $40. My experience, I'm going to say no. I'm a saltwater guy, so I'm going to base my experience on what I've used these for in the salt, and they just don't belong up here. There are other $30 reels out there in the market, the Shimano Sienna being a great one. I feel like if you can't live up to the Shimano Sienna, then you're not going to want to consider this reel. This, these do have potential, not saying you shouldn't buy it, not saying they're garbage, but compared to what's out on the market today, I don't think you can compete with the Shimano Sienna. Okay, moving on. This is where, this is where I, I burned some bridges, I think. <laughs> the Honor, does it belong here? Okay, in my experience, the smaller Honors... No, there are a lot of reels in the $50 range nowadays that can really kind of blow that out of the water. Surprise, surprise uh, reel. In fact, here's a little surprise uh, guest visit. This is the new Pen Pursuit 3. Why is this even in this video? It's kind of a new direction for Pen, and I really think it's going to set the bar for $50 reels. This is basically a Fierce 2 with HT100 drag so this drag is the same drag you'll find in a um you know in a pen clash a battle a conflict this is pen's second to top of the line drag system in pen's lowest end reel crazy so who knows what they're going to do the fierce three the fierce three is probably going to be pretty dope um pen's going in a direction where they're bringing a lot of value into the reels i mean there's a lot of hype about the spin fisher six so that really kind of drives what other manufacturers are going to have to do to keep up i bring this out here to compare the honor 50 to this reel can these compete i don't think the honor can compete with this reel here more on this reel in a future video um kind of a you know what i'll call a uh honorable mention the honor 50 great crabbing reel so if you're looking for a cheap light durable crabbing reel this is probably a west coast uh specific uh mention here yeah i'll slot this in i would say consider this if you're looking for a cheap crabbing reel and uh the honor 50 is definitely uh something to consider moving on to the carbon x man Am I really going to pay $70 for this reel when there's a lot of other stuff out there? Knowing what I know about the Fuego LT and knowing I can get that on sale on eBay. Fuego LT, phenomenal reel. It's going to push the Carbon X out of the running here. Can't say that you should you know, consider it seriously if you're looking for uh, your next lightweight spinning reel. Fuego LT, check it out. It has a mag seal. It has a carbon or it has a, a graphite frame. But 
man, that thing is beautiful. I, I really like that reel. Uh, and yeah, I'm putting surf perch on it too. It's, it's a great reel. Next up, we have the... Okay, well, I think you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I've already kind of pooped on it enough. This reel here, would you pay a hundred dollars for it probably not would you pay seventy dollars i think that's what the uh the the remaining inventory of this reel is going for i'm not going to consider it uh in the running because they don't even make it anymore and they're going in a different direction um if it was still in the market and they sold it for 80 i would definitely say consider it i really like what they did with the spartan 6000 kind of bummed that they don't have it out there anymore is the chaos 40 Apples to oranges, this is conventional versus spinning, but Chaos 40 for $40. Should you consider this as an option? If you have a lot of reels and you want a beater reel that you don't mind sticking on a rod and hanging over the edge of your kayak or giving to a kid, definitely consider it. It's hard. You'll be hard-pressed to find a um, bait caster with a clicker for $40 or $50 for the larger sizes. I really think that this reel is going to sell like hotcakes for uh, Pissafun, despite its problems, despite the fact that it's a little underpowered. For what it is, you definitely uh, get a lot of bang for your buck, I think. So yeah, I'm going to put it right there. And last but not least, the Pissafun Thunder retail value, I think $70. Is it worth considering? Should you consider this reel? Hard, yes. Okay, I'm not going to say buy it again. I'm not recommending any product here i'm not being paid this is all honest review and whatever um should you consider this real yes you'll be hard pressed to find a 200 size low profile bait caster for that much um and uh with my experience in you know targeting at least bottom fish uh you know targeting these rock fish compare or you know co compared to my experience with the reveal s compared to my experience with this thing this thing has much more performance than this and it's not priced um, too exorbitantly, if that's a word. My Revo uh, 3 Beast, that was like a $200 reel. Um, yeah, I sold it because I wanted something better. And this actually fit the bill as far as being better. So I can't not include it in the consideration lineup. And there you have it. The ultimate piss of fun reel review. Hopefully I've been honest with you guys. Hopefully you guys can consider this review honest. These are the reels that I would consider. And uh, I've mentioned the applications. Chaos, the bigger Honor 50. This is the biggest uh, Honor that they make. And the Thunder Reel. They don't even sell this on Amazon anymore. You got to go to pissoffun.com to find it. But in my experience, uh, man, I've uh, had some fun with this reel. I've had fun with all the reels. I like having fun when I'm fishing, but uh, if I'm going to be honest, as far as uh, my positive experiences, what you see here is uh, what I'm going to say worked best for me and is worth a look if you're out there pricing, uh, pricing stuff these days. So if you stuck uh, this far along with me, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you like this format. No background music, uh, minimal edits. Um, just me talking to you like you're uh, my buddy, and I'm giving you the real scoop on my experience with some fishing gear. This is the Pissafun, pretty much the entire Pissafun lineup. Anything worth its uh, salt? Um, is this stuff salt salt worthy? Well, you're going to have to rewatch my video or take a look at my channel to see uh, this stuff in, in action. I'll put some links at the end and in the description if you want uh, more information on any of this gear or you know more testimonials or examples of how this gear works. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, links in the description below. As always, any purchases made through those associate links directly support content like this. Totally does. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.